When we think of uh, infants of mothers with diabetes, we often think of babies who are really big, or we say LGA, which stands for large for gestational age. And this certainly is the case a lot of times, especially for women who acquire diabetes during the pregnancy. And when babies are LGA, they're going to have trouble during the birthing process because they're too big. But on the flip side, for women who have uh, pre-existing diabetes, especially poorly treated ones, the blood vessels are going to be affected and the babies might actually be small. And IUGR stands for intrauterine growth restriction. As you know, pregnancy requires a lot of good blood flow between the mother and the child, so insufficiency of that because of diabetes can actually lead to small babies. But in fact, uh, diabetes in mothers actually affects children in a lot of, in a variety of ways, not just in the size. So I'm just going to draw two circles here. The big one will be our mom, and the little one will be the baby. So we have mom and baby. Here I'm going to use red to represent glucose. So people with diabetes, let's say they have a lot of glucose in their blood, whether they're lacking insulin or because they have insulin resistance, whatever the case, we have all this glucose. And let's also say that insulin is this kind of teal, bright green color, and they have insulin too because, say, they're being treated for diabetes. That might be part of the treatment. Or if they have insulin resistance, all this insulin exists in their body, but it's not being used. So if this is the picture of the mom, how does it affect the infant? So first of all, insulin does not cross the placenta. Does not cross the placenta. So whether mom is getting treatment with insulin or if there's just a lot of unused insulin to begin with, it is not crossing over into the baby, so the baby's not receiving a lot of extra insulin from the mom. However, glucose does cross. Does. So the baby here is going to have high glucose because the supply of the glucose can cross this barrier. And since the baby already has a functioning healthy pancreas, when it sees this increase in glucose, it's going to produce its own insulin. So the baby also has a high glucose, high insulin kind of condition. But then after birth, I'm going to put this baby here. After the birth, since the baby is no longer connected to the mom's blood supply, the extra red glucose you see doesn't cross over anymore. So instead of being full of glucose, the baby might have just a baseline amount, depending on how much they get fed. However, their body is used to producing a lot of insulin. So the pancreas is already ramped up to produce overproduce insulin. So in the short term, right after their birth, a big problem is going to be hypoglycemia. Glycemia. Just because the amount of insulin, I'm sorry, the amount of glucose they are receiving from being fed cannot keep up with the high levels of insulin that their body is bathed in already. So the blood sugar can drop really fast with this oversupply of insulin. So when we have an infant of a diabetic mother, we need to monitor their glucose very closely, and we would like to keep it above 45. Below 45 is going to be dangerously low, so they should be fed and given extra glucose according to this range. And in fact, if they repeatedly fall below 45, they might be put in a dextrose drip to give them more continuous supply of glucose. But usually if it's not too severe, they shouldn't need that. Hypoglycemia is the one that we think of most often, but keep in mind there's also hypocalcemia and hypomagnesium. I'm just gonna put low magnesium in these babies as well. So aside from checking the glucose, the electrolyte panel is important to do as well. So these are the uh, metabolic and endocrine effects in the immediate period after birth of infants of diabetic mothers. But there are some other things that are affecting other systems, and some of these can be longer lasting as well. For example, cardiac might not be a system you would think of being affected by this, but in the development of the heart, this overproduction, overexposure to glucose can lead to interventricular septal hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. So this is a thick wall between the left and right chambers of the heart. It can compromise cardiac function immediately postpartum and in the future. Now in the realm of heme disorders, 
for these infants um, because like before I talked about IUGR and the mother's placenta might have placental insufficiency because the diabetes has compromised the blood supply and therefore the oxygen delivery. So if you think of an infant who's not getting enough oxygen, one way that the body can respond is to make more oxygen carrying cells. So they actually end up having a lot of red blood cells and they have polycythemia, which is a very dangerous disorder in, in everyone, but especially in kids. This makes the blood thicker. The viscosity actually goes up. And also because of the increased breakdown, they can also have more bilirubin. As you know, having too much bilirubin is already a problem in newborns, but if they have a bunch of extra circulating red cells, the extra breakdown will only make that worse. And lastly, in this category, they might also have low iron. So in addition to messing up the chemistry of the body, there are also some anatomical changes. Oh, actually with this septal hyper hypertrophy, I guess that counts as an anatomical thing. But there are other anatomical changes that can happen in the developing body as well. Actually in the heart, um, transposition of the great vessels has been linked. Now in these cases, we don't really know why it is that way, but it's a correlation. So transposition, tricuspid atresia, in the heart, these are our anatomical changes. Also in the gut, in the GI system, there's something called a small left colon. Small left colon. And that's exactly what it sounds like. These babies can be born with a stretch of their colon being really narrow and not very functional. Having a stretch of the gut being non-functional in a baby is problematic for their feeding and for their growth. And this is why diabetes makes pregnancies a high-risk pregnancy. And the baby should be screened for all these possible anomalies as well as have very strict um, monitoring of their glucose status in the first few days after birth.